We've got here Mr. James Jackson, better known as Mad Jacks Barbecue from uh, straight from Lockhart, Texas. But we're in Cloudcroft, New Mexico at uh, Mad Jacks Mountaintop Barbecue. So, so James, tell us all about how you came about coming up here to beautiful Cloudcroft. <laughs> well, it's kind of a long story, but this was a, a vacation spot for us for several years. We'd come up during the summertime to escape the Texas heat oh. and uh, come up here and cool off. And uh, after a few trips, I kind of fell in love with the mountains and the cool That's summers. Beautiful. And uh, I've been in the car business with my dad for over 30 years, 31 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I was just kind of burned out on the car business. And uh, it was like kind of a midlife crisis. But right. I decided to, to bail on Lockhart. Actually, I started in our food trailer there in Lockhart on the car lot. Yep. And it was more of a hobby at first. I just did it on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a while, we started getting a pretty big following. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of a long story on how I ended up up here. I kind of found a little bit of hidden treasure and it uh, made it possible for me to buy this building and, and move up here and kind building. of chase my dreams up here in Cloudcroft. Yep. And I thought it would be, uh, I thought it'd be kind of semi-retired, mm -hmm. but uh, nope. as it turns out, <laughs> yeah, they really put me to work. It's, uh, I kind of envisioned maybe having one or two helpers and, uh -huh. and a few people drift in and we'd wait on them, maybe sit down and play dominoes for a little while and uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, get back up and wait on a couple more customers. But uh, as you yeah. can see, it's it's, uh, oh. it's turned into a lot of work. It's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful place. You got a great crew. Best I've yeah. seen. You got some of the best barbecue I've ever tasted. Well, I got a pound waiting on you. And oh, you're, wait till you and, try and, this. And I'm gonna try it. Yeah. yeah. You and, don't throw rocks at those other guys. Oh, oh, oh rocks. <laughs> My arm's kind of sore, I'm, but I'm a very see. competitive guy. <laughs> and uh, I was watching your video on Desert Oak, uh -huh. and uh, I know they're great guys. I know, uh, I know Richard, 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 Richard yeah, yep. I've met Richard and his wife. They're great people. Okay, and I know he's doing a first-class job because he kind of Richard's does, a great guy, yeah. He does a lot. Uh, he does mm -hmm. it old school like we mm -hmm. do, post oak mm -hmm. and all wood fire mm -hmm. and stuff. No, you're both great but, uh, barbecue. Uh, yeah, def I'm sure he's good. i got to go see Richard. Uh, Richard versus is a good man. Good yeah, man. Sure. If you haven't seen our other video, I'll, do, I'll drop a link to it uh, right now. But about a month ago, we did a crawl here, and I didn't tell James that we were showing up. And uh, I was out here with some friends, and we just basically, you know, we got hungry for some uh, some good quality barbecue, so we ran up here really quick, did a quick barbecue crawl, and and I was blown away. It's like some of the best barbecue I've ever had, and uh, I probably you say mean, that you too mean much. The best, the best. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it's 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 just it, I can't even explain it. You know, you guys have to just come up here and experience yourself. And my friend uh, Josh, who's uh, uh, up here from California with us yesterday. Uh, I got him, actually James got him to try brisket. He's not normally a beef guy. He likes the sausages and stuff like that. That probably came out wrong, but he, how, how, how did he, like, he, he loved he the like sausage. The he, he was a very quiet, conservative guy, but when he tasted that sausage, and I wish I had some yeah. B-roll on it. but I can't, I can't take he, much credit for that because that comes from Christ Market in Lockhart. They, they've okay. been doing it for a long time. So right. When I go get my firewood, I'll pick up a lot of sausage and bring it back okay. several hundred pounds. That's all right. You're putting it on your smoker. Yeah. 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 You're finishing we, it we, off. Yeah, we finished it off. Yeah, and that's awesome. And we're at almost 9,000 feet here, and uh, but I guess that doesn't really prevent uh, James from serving some outstanding barbecue. Um, yeah, when and I first came up, I was a little worried about the altitude, but... Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem to, to hurt us. Okay. Any, if anything, it might be helping us. Mm -hmm. The so, biggest challenge would be in wintertime. We cook all night. Uh -huh. And, you know, we have a lot of winter nights where it may be single digits mm -hmm. out here. And so we mm -hmm. can go through a lot of post oak then because, like I said, our pits are all wood fired. So uh, that's a, bit, a little bit of a challenge. So tell us, how did you get into serving such fine barbecue or learning how to do it? I mean, that, that's a learning process. It takes years to really become yeah. a pit master like you. And what does it take? What did you guys, what did you do? Yeah, it's kind of funny, I, I cooked my first brisket in 2012, so I haven't been doing it that long. But my big advantage was growing up in Lockhart, and, you know, with Cripes and Blacks and Smitties and Chisholm mm -hmm. Trail right down the street. And uh, so I, I knew all the owners of those places and spent time in each one of them. Mm -hmm. And when I was a teenager, I worked at Black's Barbecue, so I kind of knew the basics of how they kept things really simple and use a post oak fire. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my credit I, I like to give, uh, about the time I got really interested in doing this, Aaron Franklin had gotten really big in Austin. Franklin? And so uh, mm -hmm. I would uh, email Franklin and ask him all kinds of questions. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he, I got to give him credit. He always answered everything I ever asked him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, would watch his YouTube videos. People think I'm joking when I say mm -hmm. I learned how to do briskets watching his YouTube videos. Learn a lot from YouTube, but, uh, totally. Yeah. If watching his videos mm -hmm. and practicing and just kind of keeping things old school, mm -hmm. all wood fire and yep. salt and pepper rubs. And, He'll never go out of style. And uh, using mm -hmm. a high quality brisket, that's one of the best, uh, first things we've learned okay. to do. Um, what kind of brisket you guys use? Right now we're using Creekstone. Sometimes mm -hmm. we use Snake River Farms, but they're both real high quality yeah. briskets. Okay. Yeah. 
We've never been to Austin. Um, I plan on getting to Austin soon. Um, I got some property down in San Antonio and- uh, Barbecue man like you, you haven't been to Austin? Yeah, I gotta get down to <laughs> Austin, man. I'm not sure <laughs> if I can get my crew there. to go with me, but uh, Deb yeah. for sure, There's Sassy Kitchen Queen. There's a lot of great places in Austin and Lockhart. Yeah, Lock yeah, Lockhart. So I've been to uh, that little place, uh, um, Converse, and but I don't know, like other than the American uh -huh. Legion there, because I went there for American Legion. Uh, so shout out American Legion Converse, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I wasn't checking to see if there was a barbecue there. Uh, there was American Legion in, in, in uh, San Antonio that was cooking barbecue while I was there. So I, you know, uh, I wanted to support the American Legion. So I didn't really do a barbecue crawl last time I was in San Antonio, but expect it. Definitely gonna get to Lockhart, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to do the whole triangle. I guess they call it triangle. Oh, yeah, you gotta go it? City Market, Luland, and yeah, or to uh, Louis oh, Mueller's and Taylor. And, uh, Jeez, and then I'm gonna have to run we, uh, five we miles. We get a we get a lot of Texas visitors here. And uh, when I have people from, especially Central Texas, and they mm -hmm. give us big compliments on the brisket, that means mm -hmm. a lot to me. Oh, uh, oh, we get visitors great. from all over the country, so if they're mm -hmm. from some other places in the country, it, uh, mm -hmm. they might not have experienced some of that mm -hmm. really good Texas brisket. It's but, really uh, good. Yeah. When I have people from uh, back home mm -hmm. say they really like it a lot, that means a lot to me. And, the, and the wood, you're using authentic uh, Central Texas post oak? Post oak. Or, or I guess I don't know if it's just from Central Texas. Yeah, but Colwell County. This is our newest smoker. It uh, came from a weld, a high school welding shop class in Forney, Texas. Uh, I met the, uh, the instructor of the class, I don't know, maybe about a year and a half ago or so. And uh, he approached me about building a pit in his classroom. And uh, you know, after I talked to him for a little while, he'd been down to Franklin's and looked at Franklin's pits. And uh, we have a Sonny Moberg pit, which is an awesome pit. And he went down to Moberg shop and uh, looked at his pits. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing to do with him. So anyway, they're, they're calling them bison smokers. Um, and one of the cool things about this, and we named this one Anna, and the reason we did is uh, there's two or three students that welded on this thing, but Anna was one of the girls, one of the students that welded on this thing. I thought it was kind of cool to have a 17-year-old girl weld up a, such a nice pit. We've got some briskets on it right now, I'll show you. I've got, uh, I think about 12 of them on there right now. Beautiful. But this is the first time we've had a fire in Anna, so we're kind of excited about it. We're gonna really? see how first these- First time? Oh yeah, first time, we've oh. never had a fire in. So did you already, uh, was it already seasoned? Well, we did have a, a fire in it to season it, but okay. this is the first time we've had a fire and actually doing a smoke on it. Nice. Um, okay. This is a thousand so gallon? A thousand gallon propane tank. Our okay. other main pit is an oiler, which is an all wood fired pit, but uh, we just can't do enough uh, on that one pit. It'll, it'll do about 30 briskets. And uh, like I said, we can do more in this one. We've got 12 today. Uh, on it. These won't be done till late tonight, so they'll be t for tomorrow. Is this quarter inch steel? Yes, uh huh. And then uh, it's got an insulated firebox with a. It's it's really well designed. It's, uh, and just just like Envy over there, the green one is Envy, and Envy. then we have a big black one that's called Betty. Where's Betty? She's behind that tarp. She's underneath the shed over there. Oh, okay. She's an oiler pit. She's all wood fired, but has a rotisserie uh -huh. made by J and R. On these pits, we we use usually run around two ninety five. Two ninety five. A little hotter than we do on my other pit. Okay. And that's, uh, I guess, by time of the year, you know, probably determines how long you're going to smoke for. Huh? Yeah, Winter and we're in the process. We're going to build a smokehouse out here to get these things out of the weather, oh, yeah. to get uh, Envy and Anna out of the weather. The other one's right, already right under shit. Yeah, we're going to build a pavilion and a little smokehouse over toward the barbecue joint uh -huh. and to cover these two big pits so we can uh, do more. Right now on Saturday, we can easily do about 42 briskets, and uh, nice. we need to crank it up, get that's up around 60. What's the story behind this? Oh, <laughs> I bought a... Uh, I was, I was back when I was still in Texas. I was up near Colleen, and uh, I was buying a classic car from a guy, and he had this old Model T. It was just a chassis, uh, no body on it, as you can see. It just had the running boards and, and the uh, wheels on it, and the headlights and stuff, but no body. And he had it sitting out in his yard, and uh, we were negotiating on this classic car I was wanting to buy from him, and finally he said, well, okay, he said, I'll take that. He said, as long as you take that old Model T. He said, I'm tired of mowing around it. So uh, I took it home just because it looked kind of cool, and uh, took it back to Lockhart. And a buddy of mine had this barbecue pit and uh, we got to measure it and we thought, shoot, that pit will fit perfect on there. So we threw it on there. That's really just something I used when I was first starting out at, uh, at my house, just playing around. It's cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It gets a lot of attention. Yeah, it does. Let's here. Hey, let's go when we have a fire and you can smoke from out of the deck. Show as you're talking, kind of break yeah, away. this thing hadn't been open in, in a year or more. We don't ever use it. If you didn't see our uh, last video, be sure to go check it out. But uh, uh, we'll go inside anyway and, and check some things out. 
Um, he saved some brisket for me, and uh, so I'm going to be enjoying that in a little while. Nice. So we got some pork ribs for you. Mm -hmm. pork, pork ribs. I've never had your pork ribs yet. Yeah. Okay. We'll they're have to try some of the pork ribs. Fast, we've ever seen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Let's go on inside I, I and check show you out the other pit. If you want to see? It. All right. I've got one that looks about like that one. My dog. Yeah. His name. Believe it or not, his name is Jack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> looks just like him though. <laughs> Sonny builds some of the best pits uh, around down in Central Texas. I mean, he does a lot of them for uh, a lot of the well-known uh, Central Texas barbecue joints. Um, Style Switch uses his pits. Style Switch, yep. Yeah. Uh, Brett's Backyard Barbecue, he's a good barbecue guy. He, he uses these pits. But uh, they're great pits. And uh, Anna's kind of real similar pit to this. Envy. Yep. I thought we got a fire still going in the SD. This, this fire box is here, but uh, we don't have a fire anymore. So what kind of smoker is this? Uh, what it's, a, it's called the Oiler. Made by J&R. Oiler. Oiler, yeah, made by J&R in Mesquite, Texas. They've been making them since, uh, I think, the early 70s. It's a great pit. It's a little different. Uh, one of my videos, I think, was like 1979. One of my visits up to Franklin's, we talked about this pit, and he gave me some tips on how he thought I should run it. Uh, but like I said, we don't have fire in it now. It's kind of died down. What do they call it? Oiler? Oiler. It's, uh, it was a family name. Oh. It was uh, two gentlemen started the company back, I think, in the late 60s, early 70s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See the name. There you go, Bob. the Mesquite, Texas. Mesquite, Texas? Yeah. Well, I guess you stay with The Great Pits. We can put 30 briskets on here with these. Um, it's all wood fired, but it has a big electric motor, so it has a, uh, a rotisserie in it. So we uh, we run this all night with briskets. It's a great pit. Yeah. I saw a um, Facebook post from you uh, introducing your uh, firebox man, your fireman. What's the proper term for Don. it? Don. My pit man, Don, my night guy. I got two. I got an early morning guy, Chris okay. Faulkner, and then I got a. Don, he, he's our night man. Matter of fact, Don's doing a double shift. He's down here in the yellow shirt. Hey, Don! There's my pit man, my night guy. Yeah. I told him you need to correct your name as Hambone, it ain't key. This, this is Hambone. This is one of my right hand men. Hambone? Yeah. I thought it was Keith. It's a nickname. Uh, you, <laughs> it's a you're long not story. No, you can't be normal here. Every everybody here is uh, a misfit. Yeah. Can't be normal. Yeah, we got a lot of misfits in here. Shaw Daddy. Hey, yeah. my okay. I'm his my left hand man. man. All right, so so Shaw Daddy, if you see the uh, last video we did last month I did. here, uh, you're you going to see him. He served us some excellent brisket last month, and he's at it again. Hey, there you go. There you go. There you go. out. Got it. Those are for you, brother. Oh, really? Okay. It's a mini more for the same style of salt and pepper. Right. Matter of fact, so you have to tell me how it is. We've only uh, did this glaze for the last two weeks. Boom. Yeah. So you have to give them more. Yeah, we changed the rub up a little bit, made it a little simpler. Uh, it's just basically salt and pepper. But uh, you got to give it a whirl, see what you think. You put me on TV, you better smile. Number one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that turkey, uh, the turkey goes on our rotisserie, and it's kind of basted throughout the night. It's on there all night long, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of that juice is actually from the bris briskets mm -hmm. above it, marinating mm -hmm. the turkey. Mm -hmm. This is our slow day. Tomorrow's gonna be crazy. So, so you used to live upstairs, didn't you? I have an apartment upstairs. Okay. Yeah, for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. I was uh, the only pit guy. I had to do the. I had to work night and day. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now I've got, got people to help at night. Night and day, yeah. You're really growing. Yeah. I would, uh, when we'd run out around 3 in the afternoon, I'd run upstairs and sleep for about 3 hours, come down and start prepping, and I'd cook during the night. And uh, I'd get a little bit of a, about 2 or 3 hours sleep uh, from around 2 to 4 o'clock, then I'd get up again and get the fires going again and, and uh, finish them out. But now i got a late night guy and an early morning guy, so I'd do That's that That's awesome. Anyway. Yeah, you definitely need a lot of help because that'll wear you down after a while. Oh, yeah, it's starting to wear me out. Tell me how you do your brisket. Keep it simple. Just watch those uh, Franklin YouTube videos and you'll know. Okay. Now we use a, uh, 
we start like I said, start with a good brisket. Uh, we use what they call upper choice. It's all natural brisket from Creekstone. Uh, we'd love to use their prime, but every time I call our Creekstone rep and ask about prime, he said, I can't see none. There's a guy in Austin that's getting it all. Really? Uh, yeah, a guy named Aaron Franklin, I think, getting it all. But anyway. Uh, I haven't been there yet. Yeah, you got, oh, you're going to have to go. One of these days. Uh, so we started with a good brisket. And we did give it kind of a light trim. Then we use a basic salt and pepper rub. We use coarse pepper and a kosher salt. So how many hours? Like, so if you're going to serve at 11, when do you put them on? The day they go on about. We start prepping around five, and they'll go in the pit around eight, and they come off the next morning around uh, 10 o'clock, nine to 10 o'clock. We like them to rest at least an hour. So salt and so, pepper. Very simple. Uh, Parts way, early morning hours we wrap them. We have the internal temp already up to about 170, 175. We'll wrap them in butcher paper and then we'll finish them out. We uh, try to make sure they have good bark on them before we wrap them. And uh, then we'll wrap them up in butcher paper and finish them out. We take them up to around 197 and uh, pull them off. And if we can let them rest for uh, an hour to two hours, that's fantastic. So I want to put a three hour argument to rest. What's the difference? between cooking a brisket, wrapping it with pink butcher paper or white butcher paper? Is there really <laughs> a difference? No way. There's no way I'd use white paper. Oh, okay. So what is I'm it? from Lockhart. Oh, okay. My buddies from Lockhart, they cry at some smitties, they throw rocks at me if they I use white paper. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, so, cause actually, uh, that's one thing I went through when I first came up here. I was talking to our, so, you know, these big vendors like Cisco, Benny Key, and I was looking for this, uh, we call pink butcher paper. and. Uh, they thought I was crazy. They said, we, we got white paper, let's just send you white. You know, what's the difference? I said, there's no, there's no way I'm gonna use white paper. I need that uh, pink paper. And uh, finally we had to find out, I called Roy Paris back at Christ and I found out where they got their paper. And uh, they get it out of San Antonio. But I found out who's manufacturing it for the folks in San Antonio. And uh, uh, it's a place in Pensacola, Florida. So we uh, originally we were buying it out of Florida from the manufacturer, okay. and uh, we'd get a big pallet, you know, about 1,100 pounds at a time or something. And uh, now we found a supplier in, in El Paso that takes care of us. Keller, Texas. Keller. Yeah. I got a friend lives in Keller. Oh. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Okay. Everything okay. Awesome. Everything's great. We'll be Fantastic. back. We'll be back in six weeks. Six weeks. Why are you gonna wait so long? <laughs> We're open tomorrow. <laughs> hey, it's, it's amazing. Oh. Yeah, there was a time when I couldn't even walk away from the cutting board, so I really have a good crew now. Really. And so anyway, after Dad had passed, and we found that mercury and uh, liquidated some other cars and stuff that Dad had, I was able to come up here and pay cash for this building, and uh, I moved to. Uh, Cloudcroft and uh, like I said I, when I first came up I thought I'd be kind of semi-retired me, me and one or two helpers mm -hmm. and uh, nearly right away it just, took, it just took off yeah it's uh, said 14 and we first started we were maybe doing uh, 14 briskets a day and now we can easily do 40 and that's really not enough usually by three o'clock we're out of everything mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, yeah get here early and get in line obviously it's worth staying in line so <laughs> get here before they run out <laughs> That's a true statement. Oh, about uh, several, about five, six years ago, he got hit by a car just down the road from us. About five miles down the hill from here, right at mile marker 11. Wow. He lived a long, ferocious life. And uh, one night, a uh, Chevrolet took him out. <laughs> so the rest of the local cat. Yeah. Turkey sandwich. There you go, man. Good to go. Okay. We all got turkey and ribs and sandwiches. Okay. We bought everything. This is your favorite barbecue? Definitely the favorite. Oh, yeah. You gotta come here. This old typewriter is real sentimental. That was my dad's. We used this uh, typewriter at the dealership all the way through 2012. Mm -hmm. You know, every car title we did went through this. Anyway, I've got uh, I've got two or three sets of them. Those are some of the original windows out of the lodge. And who used to look through these windows? Uh, Judy Garland and Clark Gable used to gaze through these. Oh, right. At the lodge in Cloudcroft, yeah, right? Lodge, yeah, in the got tower. Two, got two three sets of those. They replaced them with the newer aluminum frame windows. And these are yours now? Yeah, they're mine. All right. You're going to get up on Kinda eBay cool. anytime soon? Oh, no. i got to keep those. <laughs> those aren't for sale. 
before you get to Oxnard. Yeah, you're probably familiar with that. Oxnard? Is that yeah. where you're from? All right. Okay, hold on a second. Is that where you said you're from? Yeah, I, I live in Oxnard. So, Andy here is from um, Oxnard. Funny who you run into uh, up here. But uh, how do you come about coming to Cloudcroft? Well, I, I figured that California would get it too crowded for me. Too crowded? Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. California, uh, definitely a, a busy place to live. And uh, you, you picked a good spot because you came here really because of the barbecue, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. we all know that. He, he came here for the barbecue, James. I believe it. Yeah. I, all right. I live down the hill, but I could smell it all the way down the hill. Yeah, you know that, right? I just yeah. followed my nose. All right. Ah. Good man. <laughs> Right on. So I got another video. Uh, check it out in the links in the videos. It's uh, we did a quick barbecue crawl last month to uh, Can't Stop Smoking, and they're just down the hill here uh, in Alamogordo. But what's funny is that uh, we were talking to them the other day, and uh, for, we didn't have time to come here for lunch. And um, believe it or not, when it gets too crowded up here, they say that the people that don't want to wait in line end up going to Can't Stop Smoking because uh, it's the next thing that pops up on Yelp or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and so I'm glad we can help them a little bit. Yeah, so, um, so, um, so thanks to uh, those guys down at Can't Stop Smoking for uh, at least keeping the people happy and stuff like that because you don't want to turn people away from barbecue. It's probably the worst feeling in the world, you know. And uh, But uh, James gives us a try to try to feed everybody, but you can't. So he's going to sell until it's sold out. Sorry. There's our famous Mac. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a young lady looking <laughs> for you at that. No, she went to the restroom. Oh, I don't know if you remember her. She was one of our and you call her the boat girl. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, she's in the I'll say hi to her. She's okay. good, yeah. There's our famous oh, mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah. famous mac and cheese right there. That's made from Mac Daddy himself. And I'm a magician, so it's gonna, I'm gonna make it disappear in just a little bit. Okay. Here's Mac Daddy. He's the guy that makes all our mac and cheese, does all our sandwiches, even buns, toasted, perfect, golden brown. Mac Daddy, tell me about your mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is the best thing on the planet, boss. How do you make it? Uh, secretly. Secretly. That's on him if he tells you. I'm not telling you. I value my job, Bob. It is, uh, <laughs> it is some of the best macaroni cheese I've had. I agree. And I just changed the recipe, made it better just yesterday. <laughs> right on. That was a without permission, but he's cool with it. All right, what are you making up right now? And now we're making a chili the kid right here. We got our half grain chili, our chopped brisket, and then our pork sauce on top. Mix it all together. Look at that, brother. There we go. That's that. That's your Kirk Jackson right there. That's the main man. So, so where'd you come up with the chili the kid? Besides being in Lincoln uh, National Forest. We we did something on Facebook, had a contest, those people come up with a name for that sandwich. And uh, we had a couple from uh, Lincoln were you know, where the Lincoln County Wars all started. Yep, yep. And uh, they came up with the name Chili the Kid. That's awesome, that's very yeah. unique. up here uh, you know all the Central Texas barbecue joints had Big Red and it's got to be in a bottle like this and uh, I asked my uh, I don't know Cisco or Benny Keith rep I said I need a case of Big Red and they said Big Red what is that 
and uh, they'd never even heard of them. So it, it took several weeks for us to get these big reds shipped in here, really? especially in a long neck mm -hmm. bottle like this. Yeah. The butcher paper in these big reds were hard That's to come by. Right. So you're from Los Angeles? Well, I'm 51 years. I'm not from Los Angeles, but 51 years makes me, I guess, a native. So but you came here for the barbecue, obviously? I, of course. Of course you did. It's the best barbecue in the world. You moved to Cloud Croft because of the barbecue? Absolutely. One and only reason. That's what I meant. The pine trees uh -huh. and pine the barbecue. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. Told him I said, did you want that one that I just made? We might have seen it with Yeah. It looks bad. Yeah, it's a nice, nasty one. Real mess. So it's about 120 now, and it looks like the lines are pretty down, and uh, there's not anybody waiting now, which means there's more barbecue for me. And it looks like things are starting to calm down here. So. I guess this is when the crew actually gets to eat whatever's left. Have a good one, y'all. Pickle sandwich. So, so that's about all that's left. Pickles. So what you guys? What, what's left? I mean, I what is buns. it sold? We got buns. We got buns. We got, buns. <laughs> we got the crew. We got the crew. We got a bunch of chopped brisket left. A bunch of chopped brisket. Right here, look. Check it out. We got some chopped. A little bit of pulled pork. All right. We definitely got a bunch of dining ribs. Oh, you want right here, Bob. Okay, these are the world famous Mad Jacks Mount Top. Oh my god. Beef dino ribs right there. He preps them at night. Big as my head. And he puts them on. He puts them on at 10 o'clock at night. And we pull them off at 9 o'clock in the morning. Sorry, we're sold out. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> what y'all got left in this joint? Yeah, we come back tomorrow. We got chop, we got what? dinos, we got pulled pork. What kind of place you running here? You already sold out. Sorry, you can't sleep in till noon at Mad Jack's. <laughs> well, I think the whole thing is gonna. Is this one? No, I, I it's don't. A, it's a thousand gallon. That's what this is. Is I it? I think they're the yeah. same, dude. That same one. Setup. That one just looks a lot smaller to me. I don't know. Handbone said it looks good, rusty. You, you can't paint. Yeah, it's uh, you can't paint that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks that rustic cool. Look. I would I like do that. a, kind of a high temp clear coat. Just to keep that, we gotta get a little more rust on it. Yeah, first. like some of those rat rods people make, some of those hot yeah, rods. Yeah, you know, they, they, put just, that clear coat yeah, on. they just put a clear coat on it. It have to be a high high temperature or something. Yeah. That's that kind of cool. Next time know, you come I, see I us, we'll like have a covered area out here. here. Don't feel really? for you. Oh wow, okay. okay. Yeah, I think I ain't seen your dad lately. Where's he? Yeah. Yeah. Hiding out at the house. Is he? <laughs> Always. He sold the house. Yeah. He? Well, he's yeah he's living in a trailer now, a camper. Where's he? It's right by the house actually. Oh really? Okay. You know where the Chippeway Barn is on 130? Yeah. Uh, it's exactly. right up from there on the other side. Uh, this is a real mountain man right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, a real come, mountain man. Come here every day? For barbecue. Most days. <laughs> if there's not too long of a line. All right. Yeah. So you're from, from Cloud Yep. All right. Yeah. He's a real deal. Mountain man. He's out in the woods. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes he'll bring me a bear to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the little barbecue crawl here with James. Uh, James, you've been a real friendly, uh, very accommodating to the camera and, and to the channel, and appreciate you showing us uh, showing us around. So, uh, anyway, if you guys are anywhere near Cloudcroft, you gotta come to Mad Jack's Mountaintop Barbecue. Um, they are on Facebook. Uh, hit them up. I'm gonna drop some links down in the description. I'm gonna put their phone number too. You know, get a hold of them and find out. You're open uh, Thursday through Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. It's Thursday through Sunday. You're open at 11 and just go to it's all gone. You do around 3, 3:30. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. Okay. And you won't be disappointed. You got a great crew. Some of the best uh, Texas style barbecue you could find, and uh, it's right here in Cloudcroft. So come stay a while. Stay at the Cloudcroft Lodge. But anyway, um, be sure to like and subscribe to this video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. From El Paso. From El yes, Paso. What's your name? Siomara. How did you like this barbecue? It's delicious. It's the best barbecue in the world. Yes. She's one of my favorite customers. <laughs> Her daddy does a real good job in the bowling. <laughs> best barbecue place in the world. Do you agree with that? For sure. All right. For sure.
Thank you. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank